we're going to talk today about three kings. They didn't rule very long and they weren't good kings. Their names were Jehoia Ahaz, Jehoia Ayakim, and Jehoia Ayachin, which is really confusing, right? Well, you don't really need to tell them apart because they all acted the same. They were all hard-hearted and stubborn. They were stubbornly hard-hearted. They and the people of Judah did stupid and sinful things because they did not want to serve the Lord. God warned them that bad things were coming because of their refusal to repent and to turn to the Lord, but they didn't listen. Even when things kept getting worse and worse for them, they remained stubbornly hard-hearted. They refused to turn to God. There was a prophet alive during the reign of all three of these kings. His name was Jeremiah. You can read in the book of Jeremiah how Jeremiah preached to the people of Judah of the judgment God was sending if they didn't change their ways and turn to the Lord. Have your parents ever told you that you would be in trouble if you didn't get your room clean or didn't finish your homework? Well, what Judah was doing was much worse than having a dirty room or not finishing their homework. And the trouble that God was sending was a lot worse than not getting dessert at supper or being grounded for the weekend. Jeremiah told the people to change their ways. If they did, they could keep living in their land and be prosperous. But God knew the people were hard-hearted, stubbornly hard-hearted, and they did not want to change. God also knew the people were telling themselves that God would never let them be defeated because they had the temple of the Lord after all. So God told them not to tell themselves that everything would be okay because they had the temple. God asked them, they thought that they could steal and be mean and murder and behave unpurely and worship false gods and then come to God's temple and act as if it was all okay. God told them it wasn't okay. He was going to send armies against them who would take their wealth and take them away and destroy their homes and destroy the temple because they refused to repent and they continued to walk in stubborn hard-heartedness. This is what we'll see with Jehoia Ahaz and Jehoia Ayakim and Jehoia Ayachin. After Josiah died, his son Jehoia Ahaz became king. Jehoia Ahaz was not like his father Josiah. You remember, Josiah was a great king who served the Lord with all his heart and soul. Unlike him, Jehoia Ahaz walked in the evil ways of his grandfather Amon and his great grandfather Manasseh. Jehoia Ahaz was too stubborn to change his ways. So God sent the king of Egypt against him, who captured Jerusalem and took Jehoiah Ahaz captive to Egypt, where he would die. Jehoiah Ayakim, Jehoah Ahaz's brother, then became king. He also did what was evil in the sight of the Lord and wouldn't listen to Jeremiah because he was too hard-hearted and stubborn. He would not change his evil ways. So God sent the king of Babylon against Judah, who conquered them. But Judah and Jehoiakim still would not turn from their sin. So then God sent the Syrians and the Moabites and the Ammonites against them. But they were still too stubborn to turn from their evil ways. So God sent the Chaldeans again. The king of Babylon sent his armies and bound Jehoiakim up in chains and hauled him to Babylon where he died. Those armies also took from the temple of the Lord much of the gold. After this, Jehoiakim's son, Jehoiachin, became king. Do you think he turned from the stubborn hard-heartedness of his father? No, he did not. He too did evil in the sight of the Lord and would not turn from his evil ways. So God sent the king of Babylon again. The name of this king was Nebuchadnezzar. This time, Nebuchadnezzar took Jehoiachin and his family and most of the people of Judah into captivity in Babylon. The Babylonians also took all the valuables from the temple this time. Nebuchadnezzar did leave the poor people of the land to take care of the land. What a sad state Judah was in. It was all because they were so stubbornly hard-hearted. Stubborn hard-heartedness will get us into big trouble unless we turn from it to the Lord. Are you ever stubborn? Sometimes stubborn can be a good thing, like when you are working on something hard, like a math problem, and you refuse to quit. 
But other times being stubborn is evil, like with the three kings we just heard of. They were doing sinful things, and when God told them to stop, they stubbornly refused. That is stubborn hard-heartedness. Sometimes we do the same. Jesus sometimes was stubborn too. He, however, was never stubborn in a bad way. Jesus never sinned. But Jesus did refuse to give up because he was so soft-hearted. We read in Luke, Now it came to pass, when the time had come for Jesus to be received up, that he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem. To be received up here means die and rise from death and go to heaven. Jesus would not change his plan to go to Jerusalem, even though Jesus knew that they would whip him and scourge him and kill him. The three kings would not change because they didn't want to stop sinning. They were hard-hearted. Jesus would not change because he wanted to bring forgiveness and salvation to sinners. He was soft-hearted. Even after all that Jehoiah Ahaz and Jehoiah Iachim and Jehoiah Iachin did, there would have been forgiveness for them if they had turned from their sin and to Jesus. Even after all we have done, there is forgiveness for us if we repent of our sins and turn to Jesus for forgiveness. We should always remember how evil our stubborn hard-heartedness is and how wonderful it is that Jesus was stubborn because of his soft heart that wanted to save us sinners. Our passage of the day talks about being soft-hearted or tender-hearted. It's from Ephesians 4.32. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you. One more time, you say it with me. And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, just as God in Christ forgave you.